Hello everyone, welcome to Nord University podcast. In this short lecture, I will be talking with you about GraphQL and why it is killing RESTful API. Here I am, sitting here and recording a few episodes about the RESTful API, and now, out of a sudden, there's new technology on the block, it's called GraphQL, and I'm telling it's going to kill RESTful API. Let's take a look at the GitHub. GitHub has the new API version 4 and it's GraphQL, it's not RESTful API. Facebook has a lot of GraphQL APIs. More and more companies, they're following the suit. So why GraphQL is a better technology than RESTful API? It's a better methodology, it's a better specification. In RESTful API, you have to create a lot of endpoints. So you end up creating a lot of endpoints and every time you need to add a new functionality or you need to add a new resource for your typical CRUD operation for post, get, delete and put or patch or post, you need to go and add an extra endpoint, an extra route, an extra URL to your backend. Maybe it's the same URL, but you need to add extra code for the backend to process it. Well, in GraphQL, you don't do that because there's no need. There is just one single URL. It typically has a query or slash GraphQL or slash query. And then the actual query, the actual request goes into the payload. It goes into the body of the request. So we don't modify the URL to put an ID there. We don't modify to put the names there. So it greatly simplifies the development. It greatly simplifies the extensibility and how we can change our applications in the future because most of the applications, they're born to be changed. The code is very fluid. It needs the better you can change it, the easier you can change it, the better. Another advantage is that with GraphQL, you have a schema. So that's how they communicate. You have a schema on the back end, schema on the front end, and every time there is a mismatch, the request wouldn't go through. With RESTful API, there is no schema. It's just a JSON format, and that could lead to a lot of mismatches between different versions of the client and the server. When you have such a mismatch between a client and the server, that's a big, 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 big problem. You might have a send wrong to send wrong data. You might have to change something in a bad manner. So schema allows us to basically lock that structure and make sure the client is also working with the same structure, with the same schema, with the same types. There are types such as integer, string, JSON, etc., etc., and this gives good predictability. It will also eliminate all the versions. A lot of times I see services and or companies implement different versions, v1, v2, v3, and you would see that in the URL. Or they would do something on the client, so the client needs to find out what are the versions, what are the recent version of the API. For example, in AWS, the first field, the first string in a typical request would be the API version. In GraphQL, obviously, you don't need to do that. So again, you have more predictability and more robustness. Developing with GraphQL is just a breeze. I recently taught a workshop on Relay Modern, which is a client for GraphQL, and it was fantastic. A lot of good services are out there, such as graph.cool. You don't need to do anything. You just sign up and boom, you have a database, you have a service, you can define your types and uh, even put some logic. They have functions where you can put that logic. So check out GraphQL. I, I think it's a future because you describe exactly the data that you need. There is no multiple round trips. It's very flexible when you're working with a client. There is no need to go to the backend and update the backend. You just build a schema, define how you extract that data, either from a database or from another service. So you do that, that's it. You don't touch your backend anymore unless you want to add new types. If you want to add new types or relationships, of course, you would have to modify your backend. But 
Overall, you don't modify it. You just describe exactly what data you need on the client. And let's be honest, a lot of innovation, it's happening on the client. It's not happening on the back end. A lot of iteration, a lot of changes It's happening on the UI. Most of the times we are working in the browser applications in the front end applications. So it's great to have GraphQL. And the last bonus is if you're working with React or Angular components, you can nest your GraphQL queries such as fragments. And if you're using a client such as Relay or Apollo, you can nest them close to your components, close to how you actually describe your user interface. So that this is it for the short lecture of Node University. And my name is Azad Mardan. I'm the lead instructor at Node University. Go ahead and subscribe to this podcast or leave a comment if you want me to create new topics. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next episode.